What are we going to do as a church? Our souls need to wake up. We need to respond to the gospel of Jesus. He said, go into the world. We don't want to deal with reality, Christian. We don't even want to deal with reality even though we've been saved from this place. I'm calling on you today in the name of Jesus to rise up to the call of God. Christ is coming back soon. If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you going to scare them off to? Hell number two? People stop and think about it. If hell really exists, and it does, I didn't say that Jesus did. Then don't you think people need to know about it? Can't you at least give them a fighting chance? Or are you just going to sit there and let them burn? Hey everyone, Chris from Don't Let Them Burn here. We recorded this program the other day that you're about to listen to. My vocals came out echoing, so I just want to give you a heads up and apologize for the quality. I think you'll find the show interesting. Here we go. This is Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. Welcome to our program. Don't forget you can go to our website, don'tletthemburn.com. You can also find us on Facebook and other social media outlets. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Share so the word can get out. And uh, you can also support us on teespring.com. You can get a cool t-shirt. And there's other ways for you to support us and the links below. So today, we are going to be coming back to the topic of technology. We've been doing a lot of exposés on some of the recent movies coming out and some of the tech issues are in there too. It's a social movement, something that's been planned by all sorts of um, spiritual forces for a long time. And I believe that they're trying to mimic something in heaven. And today we'll discuss some of the things going on in our days that might just shock you when it comes to this area of tech. So today I have a regular on this program, Kevin Shrum, and we're going to just go through a few articles with you so that you really get a good idea of what's coming around the pike. What are some of the devices that are going to be used in the seven year tribulation? Yes, it will be for seven years. Some might not agree with that, but that's what we believe on this channel. And we believe that the church has a certain place before this time period. So without further ado, Kevin, how are you doing? Doing good, Chris. Good to be back with you. It's been a while and definitely uh, need to get back to making these shows uh, oh, I yeah. guess on a regular basis. Oh yeah, definitely. We're trying to ramp up these shows, people. We have a lot of things planned in the background, and um, you know, we're trying to go some places that other programs might not be um, willing to go. Um, some of your local churches won't talk about these subjects, and while we still have a chance, we're going to talk about these subjects. And one of the subjects tonight, or today, I should say, is brain chips. Sounds so ominous, doesn't it? Brain chips. You see this in the sci-fi movies. You've heard about it with super super soldiers, uh, tests done on animals. And uh, last week, Elon Musk came out with the news about these uh, neural links that will help humanity to connect to the internet and 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 their their cell phones through through the brain. And also, we must never forget this, that it's always going to lead to us being in the hive mind, at least this portion of the hive mind called the internet and artificial intelligence, the global brain. What do you have to say, Kevin? Yeah, uh, definitely uh, what you said. Mo uh, most local churches can't handle this information. Is, I know that from experience, but yes, uh, what we see, you know, it's no longer, we used to say, you know, the technology of the beast system, you know, it's coming, you know, the foundations there, you know, it's no longer, you know, in the future. The technology is here now. You know, mm -hmm. as you mentioned before that, you know, we believe the church will be taken out of the way before these things can occur. And I believe that's the only thing that's holding back, holding these things back, is the fact that God's church uh, that he purchased with his own blood <coughs> is still in the world today. And uh, that's the reason these things haven't 
come to pass the mark of the beast in the system, the cashless society. These things are here right now, and people need to just, you know, open their eyes and see it, that it's, it's no longer coming, uh, but it's reality today. Absolutely. And before we get to the point about a cashless society, realize this, uh, listeners, if, if, for those that don't know, this whole Neuralink brain chip issue will connect to this cashless society thing because whether it's in your hand or in your forehead or a chip at the back of your skull, it all connects to what the Bible's talking about in the book of Revelation about, you know, in Revelation 13 to be precise, you won't be have, you won't have the, uh, the ability to buy or sell without the mark. Now, uh, bear in mind, we're not saying that the neural lake in and of itself right now is the mark of the beast. I think all of these technologies are gonna lead up to it and you're gonna see the evidence as we go on. Yep, and I believe the mark won't be something you can take, you know, by, you know, accident or, you know, that, you know, you'll just be prompted to, to be able to, to, you know, to buy or sell. It's gonna be a form of worship of the beast. I mean, people are gonna know full well what they're doing when they take the mark. It's not gonna be like, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, if I get the chip, is this the mark? Or, you know, is the social security card uh, the mark of the beast? It's gonna be nothing like that. You're gonna know full well that you're taking the mark and you're pledging your allegiance to the beast system. Absolutely, I totally believe that as well. And um, so, you know, okay, so Elon Musk, about a year or two ago, probably about two years, if I'm not mistaken, announced that humans should be linked to, you know, computers. And also Facebook. I agree with so many here, but what gets me about that, what you just said, is the fact, you know, on one hand, he said, he's, he's warning humanity about the dangers of artificial intelligence. And that, and one, and matter of fact, in one video, he speaks of it as summoning the demon. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, he's speaking that we have to, uh, you know, align with AI. We have to combine humanity and artificial intelligence together to keep this from happening. So it's like this guy speaks out of both sides of his mouth. Yeah, I, I believe so too. Um, cause how are you going to warn and then all of a sudden now you want to hook up to AI? It's, it's silly to me. Um, so this is called an ambitious project, which it is. Um, and, and here on in the inverse, this is um, the inverse.com. It's an article about the six things we learned from Elon Musk and uh, the brain power and the brain powered uh, chips and everything. And it, it, one of the part of this article says the machine link up could pave the way to safer AI. So that already insinuates that AI is dangerous, right? <laughs> and they've gone through clinical trials with um, animals and they are basically purporting that it's it's uh, supposed to be safe for humans now so they're going to human trials and uh, they did a whole presentation where they show that robots now robots <laughs> will be doing neurosurgery um, and these chips will uh, be connected to like something that looks like hair follicles when they're injecting them into uh, the human skull or whatever. Uh, there, w there will be a, a hole, an incision in the skull, and they'll, you know, put the chip in, put the hairs in or whatever. It's small. It's really small. Um, uh, they said it's 95 microns thinner than a human hair. The probes, at least. Let me see. The probes are 5 microns thick, 3 microns thinner than a, a red blood cell, and 95 microns thinner than a human hair. The design enables the probes to get close to neurons to detect spikes, and the team believes that the probes can rest 60 microns away from a neuron to detect the spikes. And then, here I'm looking at the illustration of where they'll have the incision in the brain, tiny hole, and they it'll the, this brain chip will be behind the human ear, right? And they, you know, they, they're not the only ones working on this stuff, but this is the major one coming out now. So go ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to mention that, that, you know, they're not the only company doing this. I'm, I, I saw another video, on, I believe it was on CNBC, where it uh, talked about there was a 16-year-old uh, a boy that was actually started his own company and working on these same things. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been hearing about this for a while. And I believe that DARPA um, have military applications for this stuff already. They've been, you know, into this area for a while. Um, yeah, I mean, the Department of Defense have worked on this from the 1970s. And, you know, even mm-hmm. farther back, things have been, you know, made mention of and uh, have been envisioned. And that's what we're coming into is, you know, this Orwellian future now where... These things, I mean, they're openly admitting that these chips can read our mind, that they will link us to a hive mind and will be uh, form a, a symbi- symbiotic link with the machine. And people are just, you know, are saying they, they want to have these things. Uh, and, of course, they're making, you know, the uh, first, they're, you know, showing that these things will help people uh, that are handicapped, maybe paralytics, people that are blind, people, you know, that can control, uh, say, a, um, a prosthetic limb with just their thoughts. You know, they're they're only speaking of the good things, but, I mean, there's a myriad of, uh, I guess you could say, uh, evil things that can come out of this. Absolutely, and, and we'll get to that in a second, too. Um, but here, they said... Um this will use the four chip setup to enable patients to control their smartphone using their brain. Uh, though that, uh, through that, they can control a mouse and keyboard at, uh, on a computer through a Bluetooth connection. So, if, if you don't know out there, people, they're, they're, they already have brain control drones, brain control TVs. Just look it up. It's, it's, they have uh, presentations on YouTube about this stuff. So. Don't, don't think that this is really something that new. It's just that this is now coming out to the public. Um, they say t- time scales will vary depending on regulatory approval. Musk previously stated in April 2017 that it may be around eight to 10 years before it's available to people without disabilities. So <laughs> I think it'll be sooner than that. Yeah. And people are basically conditioned through sci-fi movies and all this stuff to accept this stuff. Uh, You know, you have a ton of sci-fi television shows on uh, Netflix or uh, Amazon that gives you the scenarios of the future. Like one scenario is you have this device and this was on the sci-fi channel um, and basically you would have a device you're, you're on a date and you have a device that you could give the other person and both of you guys link up to a neural link and immediately you would be able to read the other person's history and you decide, okay, well, I think I don't want to be with you <laughs> or you're compatible with me. That's an actual technology they're working on now, it's been for years now. So. This 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 kind of goes along with that, but you go ahead. And, and you know the fact that I guess we talked about we talked about the social credit system in China before. This mm-hmm. is going to link up with that as well, where you know these chips they'll not only carry you know our banking information, they'll carry criminal records, they'll carry financial history, they'll ca- carry job, they'll carry our job history, medical records. Any piece of data that's prevalent to a person can be, uh, you know, stored on these chips because, I mean, they have just, you know, a, a massive amount of, of uh, storage capacity on them. So, yeah. I mean, our whole history could be implanted on these chips. And then the fact that then you mesh that with a social credit system, which that's another thing that's coming to America. I mean, I, I've seen an ad for that uh, just mm-hmm. this week. I believe it was called MyLife.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, where to talk about our online reputation, uh, you know, that's nothing more than the social credit system coming to the United States. Absolutely. And in, in, in other ways, we already have that system, um, Facebook likes or dislikes, YouTube like or dislikes, whatever, whatever, whatever the platform. Um, and I believe that these companies that were funded by the, the, the alphabet groups, the C blank A or other ones, you know, they will be the first to implement the system, especially when you have Facebook with 2 billion people. And we're, right. we'll, we'll get to what they're doing in a second too. Uh, we already have this 
credit score in place for our finances. And nowadays, people are not being uh, not getting employment because of it. This is the same system. It's just that it's, it's just improved in China. And, um, you know, just be aware that this stuff is coming, people. I mean, if you're in your 40s, um, you know, early 30s, mid 30s somewhere, you've already had some children, maybe or whatever. Uh, and you might feel like you've already lived your life. But your children, your teenagers, your young adults, this is a immediate future that they're facing. This is not 50 years off, um, especially if America goes communist. But yeah, I, I digress. Go ahead. Yeah. And, you know, this this will also be, you know, all this is going to be linked up, uh, as we talked about, you know, uh, on the phone earlier with environmentalism, because that seems to be the big push now. Uh, you know, even from, you know, I know, you know, teenagers that, you know, they are very concerned with the environment, you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, when I was a teenager, you know, I, you know, I could care less about throwing, you know, littering outside or something, you know, we have teenagers today, you know, they don't, they want to cut back on their use of plastic because it's been in, it's been ingrained in them that man is destroying the earth and that, you know, it, as you talked about that, you know, they're not going to have a future. They keep being told they're not going to have a future uh, due to what man is doing. So they've got to change it. Right. And that's, that's one of the catalysts that's going to be on all what we're going to see, all the changes that are coming that, hey, this is for your survival. We've got to do this. Absolutely. And let me tell you, but, you know, I, I don't want to go into my, you know, environmental evolution rant. So I'm, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> let, let me, let's just try. To, I'm going to try to keep going on so I can get out of this Elon Musk situation. I'm at point number four and it's surgery will be like LASIK. These probes are incredibly fine and far too small to insert by human hand. So if this is in you. You can't take it out with your hand. So <laughs> Neuralink has developed a robot that can stitch the probes in, in, um, in through an incision. It's initially, uh, sorry, it's initially cut to two millimeters, then dilated uh, to eight millimeters, placed in and then glued shut. The surgery can take less than an hour. So this will be very quick for you to just go get your little chip and hook up to the to the global brain right very um what do you call it it's not inconvenient let's put it that way um and, um, and then, go ahead. then uh then selling like software packages for this chip that hey hey you can pay 99.95 uh chris and you can become like a a master uh at the piano right. i mean and, of all the applications then, I mean, just like they sell apps for the phone, then they'll be selling apps for the brain. Hey, uh, don't want to spend, you know, years learning to play the guitar or some other musical instrument. I, I don't want to spend years learning, you know, martial arts. Just download it inside your head then. Absolutely. And this, like I said, we've been trained. We've been, pro we've been uh, programmed to accept it already. Conditioned. Uh, what you just described was the Matrix. Yep. They, they needed to go on a mission. Somebody needs to learn how to fly a helicopter. Hey, download it in my brain. Boom, got it. I can fly now. Um, I have a, a whole row of guns that come up like a like a mile long closet. I can get I can get a, I can learn how to shoot any weapon in seconds. <laughs> so um, to go along with what you're, what you're talking about with the apps, it says part number three, point number three and point number four. It's uh, it uses an iPhone app designed in partnership with Meta, Meta Lab to interface with the Neuralink using a simple interface to train people how to use the link. Uh, quote, you have no wires poking out of your head. Very important. It basically Bluetooths to your phone. Must said um, another quote. We'll have to watch the App Store updates for that one. Must make sure we don't have a driver issue. Um, and and drivers for people that don't know is just you know software update. Um, these are the things that help drive information from one source to another. Um, 
and and there's no word on a on an Android version yet. But but going along with the same brain chip chip issue as far as the App Store, one of the most intriguing comments came during the question and answer session where an audience member asked uh, about third party software running on the pod with um, read and write abilities. It's potentially a tricky area of development. And a quote is conceivably there would. There could be some kind of app store thing in the future, Musk said. Hodak noted that any creations uh, couldn't use an ad-supported model, while ads on the phones are mildly annoying. Ads in the brain could be a disaster waiting to happen. And this leads to the idea, if the ads aren't in there, someone can hack in, it's always a possibility, yep. and place all sorts of um, ads or other materials <laughs> in front of your eyes. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just the implications of, of what you just talked about and what I mentioned are just, to me, they're frightening. I mean, the Bible speaks of a, a, a delusion coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, imagine if you could, those, these uh, chips that you know that they already saying you know have the potential to be hacked that hey they could put fake memories in these things mm -hmm. like uh, I mean we've talked about you know the I guess the uh, I don't know if, is that Project Blue Beam about the fake alien invasion yeah. with the hawk them mm -hmm. why they wouldn't even have to do that now why they wouldn't even have to have a hologram they could just put a scene in your head then of an alien invasion or any other thing uh, to make a strong delusion in your mind. Absolutely, and that leads to point number one. A symbiotic relationship is still the goal. Neuralink may initially focus on healthcare benefits, but Musk noted his goal is to link up humans with AI. Musk compared it to using a smartphone, except making it a more direct link instead of telling the brain to move fingers to interact. Uh, this is a quote. It says, this is going to sound pretty weird, but we want to achieve a symbiosis with artificial intelligence, Musk said. This is not a mandatory thing. This is a thing that you can choose to have if you want. I think this is going to be something really important as, at a civilization scale level. I've seen a lot about AI over the years, but I think even in the benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Uh, then it says details around the economics of the setup are still sketchy, but Musk joked that quote: "If you want a, uh, if you want to be symbiotic with AI, I think it's safe to say you could repay the loan with superhuman intelligence." Unquote. Uh, perhaps a funny suggestion, but research suggests that intelligence does not always predict financial well-being. What do you think about that? Wow. So these things, uh, from that we hear these things are going to be pricey, but that, hey, the benefits of this, that, hey, you know, you're going to become, you can tap into the hive mind and have all the intelligence of the ages, that, you know, that, that can repay it, was basically what he was saying there. So, you know, and two, you know, he said by choice. And, you know, that, that gave me an interesting thought, the fact that, yeah, it is by choice, but, you know, it wasn't so long ago that, you know, smartphones were by choice, but now it's almost like these things are a necessity. Yeah. You know, you can't do business or, you know, how many people, you know, still have a flip phone? I mean, we make a joke there where I work, you know, I work in IT and, you know, there's a few, a couple of old, old, old guys there, you know, they're ready to walk, they're ready to retire. You know, they still have a flip phone, but, you know, they're probably the only ones there uh, in almost in the whole company that would have a flip phone. So mm. everybody's got a smartphone. So, yeah, they're they're not mandatory, but in a way they are, you know, either by, mm. I guess, social pressure or just, you know, the, you know, business needs or whatever kind of need to have these things. These things have almost become mandatory. Well, here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of places you can't go without paying with your cell phone. That's become the norm now. Uh, 
Uh, remember now that Amazon came out uh, their, their, their test model for their store um, in certain uh, districts. You walk in with your cell phone. It knows that it, the, the computer system inside, the system inside knows that it's you because they're identifying you with your cell phone. You go in, you pick up your groceries, and you don't have to worry about money because you already have that credit on whatever system on your phone, whether it's Apple Pay or something else, and you walk out of the store without having to worry about a cashier. Yep. Now, that's what we have today. But what if the next step, which it will be, because the Bible says so, is having something in your body right <laughs> so it, it, you're, you're not you're not far off and even we talk about the flip phone how many of us don't have a regular house phone anymore exactly you, you have kids uh young adults or whatever nowadays that don't even know how to use a rotary phone or you know some <laughs> of the other phones that we used to use you know yep. things have changed pretty fast you know When's the last time you saw a payphone? Uh, yeah, in, only in the downtown district. But um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's funny how things are changing so fast. But um, I think some of us are of, the, are of the mindset that it's not changing that fast. And a lot of these um, t technological marvels are coming 50 to 100 years from now when, no, that's, that's old dinosaur thinking. Everybody is ramping it up. And the tech is, is just exploding and we really don't realize what's around the corner. And I don't want to make it seem like it's all, you know, this dreadful thing. Tech is good. We're using tech right now to broadcast to you. However, there is a technocracy forming. And even though all of these companies aren't thinking the same way, some of them are. And a lot of them are far left leaning and communists that's it and the global economic system or governmental system it's almost totally in place as we speak the time is here so jesus, and jesus christ is coming back soon so let's move on <laughs> um Yes, you had the LifeSite article of Sweden, you know, I think this would be a good uh, step into that. You know, you mentioned, you know, paying with your phone, you know, or, you know, the phone, the store tracking your phone. You know, I used to work in the packaging industry, and this is probably 20 years ago. You know, we were working with RFID chips, you know, inside of products, you know, and the plan then was, you know, to have uh, the RFID all go and be read, you know, as you say, you're walking out of the store and then charging that to your account, you know, that, and that sort of didn't materialize, but, you know, we were actually doing some trials with that, you know, like I said, 20 years ago. So, you know, now it's being replaced with the idea of a chip inserted, you know, into the hand or forehead. And, you know, there was a man named Carl Sanders and he was one of the uh, original people that worked on this chip and, I'll say this and let you get into the article, but, mm -hmm. you know, he worked on this thing years ago, and, and I believe the man is dead now, but his testimony was that, you know, they were using a lithium battery to, to power these chips, and, you know, these chips would be injected via a syringe inside your skin, but he did make mention in his testimony as they were working on this, and as they were developing these chips, that they were looking for a way to recharge the lithium battery. And as they did, uh, they were looking at the exact placement in the body to put these things. Mm -hmm. And one place they found that had the, you know, the most temperature change that could recharge the battery was in the forehead. Because, you know, that's where, you know, all the mothers know it's where they, you check the temperature of your child. Mm -hmm. Because the temperature fluctuates greatly there on your forehead and also in the right hand. Absolutely. And your right hand, because that's your extremity that's the furthest away from your heart. You know, mm -hmm. that, so here we have, once again, Revelation 13 playing out before our eyes. Absolutely. And um, 
that's a good explanation because I mentioned that to someone before and I totally forgot what the source was and thanks for clearing that up for us listening remember that right hand forehead the Bible is specific and it God is never wrong right. he's never wrong so that's what's going to happen yeah they have these um you know, the RFID chips, and you could put it in the left hand or the right hand, you could put it in your shoulder, you could put it in your arm, but the, whatever's coming, it will be the right hand and the forehead. And you can't take that and make it into an allegory for something else, or oh, it's the Catholic Church, or the worshiping the Pope, or worshiping on Saturday or Sunday, whatever you want to say. Uh, people take the Bible out of context. God meant what he meant. John yep. saw what he saw, and God told him to write it down precisely how he saw it, or at, at least as best as he, he can describe in some cases. Now, moving on, moving along to this cashless society, we have uh, this article from LifeSite News, and it was published July 17th, 2019. And it says, Mark of the Beast, question mark, thousands of Swedes become microchip. Now, before I go into this article, <laughs> I've been looking at Sweden for a long, long time. And they've been on this road forever, uh, figuratively, of course. And um, everything is just coming to the breaking point to where they're not going to have cash anymore. And... There's so, even some um, public uh, systems where you cannot go on there trying to hand money. You have to have some sort of chip or some sort of, sort of card with, with a chip in it. So it's been coming for a long time. Now, it says that Sweden's Biohacks International has patented a microchip that can be injected into a human hand and used to carry out financial transactions, unlock doors, and access information. Jawan Osterlund, 38, began his company in 2013, and according to Fortune magazine, Biohacks has now inserted microchips into 4,000 people in Sweden and others from across Europe. Go ahead. Yeah, and the thing about this article that I found so interesting was that, that same uh the, the founder there is quoted saying, with AI, anything will be possible. So mm -hmm. he was saying, talking about the merging of these chips with artificial intelligence. He said, he said anything is going to be possible. As a matter of fact, he added a kill mechanism to be part of the implantable. Mm -hmm. Once yeah. again, put that social credit system and, uh, you know, they could just wipe people out. Yeah, there was a, for those that don't know, there was an interview um, by Alex Jones with a guy named Aaron Russo. He was a director in Hollywood. And he was giving his testimony about how he met one of the Rockefellers. And they became best friends. And this certain Rockefeller, one of the, the sons or whatever, was telling Mr. Russo that he, he needs to join the movement because they're going to put in a system which is ran under microchips and when cash is gone if you're if you don't go along with the system they'll just turn your chip off and i believe that that turning your chip off thing can also mean eradicate you from life because this stuff is going to be inside your body and it can accept us it can as once you if you can receive a signal, you can also give one out, vice versa, it doesn't matter where you're from or where it's going, that can happen just like hacking or some outside force doing whatever they're doing. So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I wanna read this part too, because this goes back to what I was talking about that, you know, you will not be able, and I, I see so many people on, you know, social media and other sites, you know, worrying about the mark of the beast, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. you know they, they would have to take it. But it's going to be something that you know you're doing. And, and he, he mentions this down here in this article. He said, uh, Weston speculated that in the not too distant future, law abiding citizens will only be able to engage in commerce by means of such a chip. He speculated that citizens will eventually only be able to receive such a chip if they first agree to sign on to some statement. That's mm. in quote unquote. 
of a so-called human right that would include an acceptance of homosexual ideology, abortion, and other immoral positions. In this way, signing such a statement to receive such a tip would mean a turn towards Satan and away from God. Mm. <laughs> you, you see, like I said, we've been conditioned and we're going to, we're, the world is going to be in such a state that we're going to want this stuff. Right. Spiritually, economically, physically, we're going to give our all, well, not we, but the, <laughs> the people stuck there that's going to take the mark of the beast, the number of his name and all that. They're going to, this is, they're going to depend on this even to worship the beast. Yep. So we put it in the right context. You see how this is just gonna, you know, they, they, you know, there's uh, opinions out there. Will it change your DNA? Will it not? I, I think it will, based on the aspects of five G. Um, will you be human anymore? I don't know. Uh, the, but the point is to get saved now, rather than going through that period of time. And uh, you know, th there's a, there's a part in this article that tells you how we've been conditioned. He basically said, it's a cultural thing. We have a faster adoption rate of new technology in Sweden, and there is probably a higher level of trust in our government than in many, many other countries. We aren't scared that we will be taken advantage of. That's, that says a lot to me. Yep. You're, ten, you're turning your whole, your whole um, existence over to this governmental apparatus. So this is just a, a, a small version of what's to come, but what's to come has much more spiritual application. Go ahead. You know, these things are uh, beginning to take on, you know, acceptance. We don't know what events that would lead to, you know, a mass, uh, say, chipping of all society, you know, maybe a, another world war which would lead to an economic collapse mm. you know and all the currencies you know be worth nothing then then it's, they have sort of a reboot with the financial system and coming up and say oh you have to take the chip you know to be you know part of this thing so you know there are some unknowns but the fact that we do see people being conditioned to take these things is, is, is alarming to me yeah. Uh, another part of this article says, quote, this means that human behavior can be trackable and controllable by the injector. And if that injector is a government or a corporation under the control of government, we are turning a corner where government will be able to wipe out a class of people based on their origin or opposition to policy. He continued, and uh, the writer of the article said, Black mentioned China, again, whom he called a pioneer of the eugenics of our time and its social credit system, which already controls the behavior and movements of its citizens. Uh, quote, if this technology becomes widely adopted, especially in totalitarian regimes like China, we could see the dreaded transition to an unknown region of human existence, the author said. You want to check out Technocracy Rising by Patrick Woods, and it basically tells you about how this, this idea of technocracy has been building up for, you know, generations and, and where we're headed. You, you really want to get a, a, a complete understanding about this subject because we could talk about tech until a cow comes home. But if you don't understand all of the ramifications, then you'll, you'll continue to be lost. You'll continue to be a slave to your cell phone. You'll continue to get your kids to be slaves to this technology. When you see... Um, not just kids, but teenagers and young adults fight their parents over phones and video games. There's something wrong <laughs> there. And the tech is becoming the god of our society. And speaking of that, we have this article from the Daily Star. It says, humans will worship AI Messiah God robot religion expected to boom. And 
you know, I have presentations where I've given direct quotes from people on video about them contacting beings to develop tech dealing with AI so that demons can come in them and control the AI. That's the goal. We're not talking about the AI in your phone. We're not talking about Siri. We're not talking about Alexa. We're talking about a more advanced AI that people think is 100 years off. So here we are with people coming up with robots that you can worship. There's one in, um, where was that? In the east somewhere, where a Bo in a Buddhist temple where people are actually trying to get advice from this robot and he was preaching to them, you know? <laughs> so here we have, it says, former Google and Uber engineer Anthony Lewandowski founded AI-based religion, the way of the future. So people can worship a godhead, it's a quote, <laughs> robot that is a billion times smarter than humans. Now this um, article is from 2017. I want you to be aware of that. So this is already uh, building in the background with these transhumanist people and people that want you to worship AI because they think that because it's a billion times faster than humans that it, it must be a god when God himself is infinitely smarter than us because he is God. There is none like him. That's stated all through the Old Testament and that's what we believe here. Um, and it says that he wants to create a new church, quote unquote, that revolves around artificial intelligence and has people worshiping at the feet of a supreme machine. Go ahead. I mean, that right there is, uh, that has to be Satan, one of his, uh, I guess, ultimate dreams there to have people, to me, that they will be, wor I mean, that's just another form of idol worship. Uh, they're going to worship this robot based on, you know, its so-called intelligence and what it knows. I mean, and, and that's just a throwback. I mean, I mean, look at the, the Mayans and the other civilizations down through the ages that, that worshipped idols. I mean, that was the same thing. They thought these idols somehow knew things. And to be honest, they were communicating with spirit. Absolutely. And that's the thing that AI is going to be. I mean, you look at some of the, uh, the temples down there, uh, the Mayan ruins down there, uh, Chichen Itza, I believe that's the one I went to before, where, you know, at the, the winter solstice, you know, the shadow of the serpent, when the sun hits it at a certain point, the temple, you know, a shadow of a serpent will climb the, the back stairs of that temple. Mm. And so that to, for them to construct that, they had to have, they had to be getting knowledge mm -hmm. uh, uh, from another dimension. Yeah. And, you know, that's the whole thing with this quantum computing, the quantum entanglement, you know, that we saw in uh, Avengers Endgame and the other Marvel movies. That's Captain where they're... Marvel. Is. Yes, to get the the information, you know, to get the speed of process, and they're going into what they call this quantum realm, which is where these people have been going for years. They're going to another dimension, all right. But I believe, as you mentioned, they're they're messing with demons, right? And and the the Book of Revelation, even though we have different interpretations about this right here, the subject I'm about to get into uh, is there will be an image of the beast. And people will worship it. You're going to give their all to this thing. It's the, this is the image of the beast, not the actual Antichrist. It's the image of the beast. And it will talk and whatever, communicate. Now, whether this is a hologram, because hologram technology is one thing we haven't really touched on the show and we've been trying to for years now, but it keeps getting better and better. So I've, I've been holding off. Um, but it could be a hologram or it could be AI in a hologram, or it could be uh, a statue. It could be uh, an automaton, uh, something like that, you know? It could be a myriad of things, but the point is, it won't be alive, but it will speak. It's an image, it's an idol, and they will worship it. Yeah, that's the point I was trying to drive home. 
you know, whether it's made of stone or silicone, mm-hmm. this thing is still an idol. Yeah. And from what we know from the scripture that behind every idol is a demon. And I believe that, you know, we get this whole, to me, it's this whole ghost in the machine is what AI is anyway. Yeah. You know, when people are going to combine with this artificial intelligence, I believe they're going to be possessed with demons. Yeah, and and we know at that time in the, the seven year tribulation that demons will um, be out in the open. People will uh, not repent from their fornication, witchcraft, idol worship, all sorts of things uh, that they won't repent. Now, the, the, here's the thing. They, they will know it's not going to be an issue if God exists or I'm an atheist or agnostic or whatever. They're going to know that Jesus Christ is the one true God and they will still refuse to worship him. Their hearts will be cold as stone. And you just imagine that that state of being, to know that God is real, he exists as Jesus Christ, the one that came to set the world free from sin, and yet you're there saying no. In fact, so much that the entire world, well, not the entire world, but the, the armies of, of that day will turn their weapons on him when he arrives at his second coming. I'm trying to give, give you guys some, uh, some perspective here to show you that all of this that we're talking about, all of these issues, brain chips, AI, people using tech for the wrong things are all leading up to this period. It won't be this period that humanity strives for, which is this peace, and the Antichrist is going to bring a false peace. It won't be this utopia. It won't even be this quote-unquote post-apocalyptic world that you see a lot of these sci-fi movies. The post-apocalyptic world in the right context is a revelation of Jesus Christ as he comes and sets up his millennial kingdom. That's a true post-apocalyptic world, a world that's almost turned perfect and peaceful. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. You know, we have, man is trying, you know, for years, man is trying to bring back, you know, the golden age is what, uh, you know, they make reference to the time before the flood when, you know, we believe the atmosphere was different. You know, the conditions on the earth were different. And, you know, man for millennia has tried to get back to that time, you know, including, you know, the Nazis. That was their their mm-hmm. fourth track. They wanted to get back to that, that golden age. And that's what this, this all this technology is, is trying to bring man. I mean, it's trying to bring back this, this rock that uh, the Nazis were trying to get to, this this time of peace and you know that's what the the scriptures say over there in Thessalonians you know talks about they say peace and safety then sudden destruction is going to come up on them mm-hmm. that's what the world is looking for they're looking for safety and security and now you know not in the promise of of Hitler and the brown shirts now it's in the uh, the realm of uh, AI and technology is promising man this great prosperity uh, mm-hmm. this great Security and safety coming if we just bow our knee at the uh, the altar of the AI God, but only the true the true age. And I, I, I'm I'm a realist in the fact that in Revelation 20, you know, people try to allegorize uh, the the thousand year reign of Christ, but you know, he mentions he he mentions thousand years six times over there in the Book of Revelation 20. <laughs> so it's going to be a period of of a thousand years where Christ will he will physically rule from a throne in Jerusalem and you know a, mo, a lot of the Old Testament prophets you know they give uh, a detail of this you know Revelation really we only have one chapter and just very few verses dealing with the millennial but you know you go back into Isaiah and some of those other books you know they give a very detailed explanation of what life on earth will be like Zechariah does as well you know, I believe it is Amos uh, talks about that. You know, the the planters they'll be out planting their their crops, and it says the reapers will come right behind them. I mean, this world is going to be totally different. You know, mm-hmm. man will want for nothing, but even in that though, you know, it's going to end just the way this age is going to end. 
when the devil's loosed out of his prison, he says he's going to gather the, the nations of the world the, uh, from the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, mm-hmm. going to gather them together, and they're going to attack Jesus on his throne. So they're still, you know, that's going to just show, you know, man thinks, you know, if they're raised in the right environment, you know, that, you know, men will turn out to be, you know, you know good citizens. Men will be raised during this time of peace and prosperity, and they are going to still turn their face against God because, you know, in in his fallen state, man is, has a depraved nature, and mm-hmm. Satan turned this against uh, Jesus Christ, and then it, says, it talks about fire coming down from heaven and consuming them all. Yep, yep. Um, you know, some of this stuff is dark and, you know, troubling, but we have to address these issues. But at the same time, there's hope. There is peace in Jesus Christ. There is, um, you know, the blessed hope, which we believe is the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapture. Um, but in Colossians 3, you know, Paul's writing to, to the, the church over there. He tells them in chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, if you then be risen in Christ, basically if you're saved, seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Wherein Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That tells you we're coming back with Christ. We'll have our glorified bodies. We will be with him that's our hope not not the, like i said not the peace that the world is trying to give you not our hopes in our automobiles or our money whatever we have that satisfies our earthly needs we don't need to focus on that stuff so much to where we lose focus on christ and all these this these disturbing stuff our world is like it looks like it's spiraling out of control but at the same time everything in God's plan is falling into place and that you should you should have peace about that you should have your real security in Jesus Christ and um, if you want to add anything to that yeah just you know and we're not we're not here bashing technology as Chris mentioned I mean technology is the reason we're on the air today you know technology has, has done a lot of good things allowed the gospel to get out and you know to people that may have not ever heard it but in the same vein, you know, we're told some things that were in, in, in the book of First Peter, you know, uh, that we're to be watching and waiting on the Lord's return. And one of those things he tells us over there is to be sober. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I hear the word sober, I, I'm thinking, you know, somebody getting drunk on alcohol or maybe on, on drugs. But we need a sobriety in the church as far as even technology. I mean... Uh, you know, some people, you take their phone away, they're going to act like a drunk with the DTs. I'm telling you, brother. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. going to act like you took away the bottle from them. And you're going to find how, you know, you, you just say, I mean, if you get up in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to set my phone aside, you know, this day. You see how much that, that has a fleshly control on you mm-hmm. that, you know, you can't give it up. So, yeah, that's the one thing I believe we need to be where the church is lacking right now. It's it, lacking in anticipation of Christ coming that we're watching and waiting and the fact we just need to sober up brother Chris we need to we need to be sober absolutely the keep our mind on, on Jesus Christ getting to his word and you, you know for, for the people out there that you you might be still questioning does God really exist are these guys crazy they believe in this God. They believe in Jesus. I there, there can't be any proof. Romans 1 tells you that God exists and you know it. You know it. And, you know, many people turn to worshiping animals and, you know, idols, uh, gold and silver and all these things. Uh, but Jesus Christ came to be one of us in the flesh 100 percent god 100 percent man why because there's something called a sin nature and we all have it and it was passed down through adam after the fall it's in our dna basically and until we get our new bodies as christians we'll have this sin nature 
But Christ defeated all of that on the cross by the shedding of his blood because he was the only one that was perfect in everything. He was the only thing, he was the only one that could be sacrificed. His blood was perfect to cleanse us, to redeem us, to bring him back, bring us back to a relationship with him. So, you know, when you, when you notice that you are a sinner because you lied, you probably fornicated or you murdered some of you guys, you know, uh, maybe you've uh, bowed down to another God, maybe yourself or some other idol. You know, this is all part of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments exposes who we really are. And since Christ did what he did on the cross, it's basically a free gift. He paid the penalty that you Oh, to save you from death and hell, the consequences of sin. And so if you want to be in the right relationship with God, you could do that today. It doesn't take, you know, some obscure prayer from somebody else. Do what you do. Talk to God. Speak to him. Say, you know, I want to put my trust in you. He resurrected on the third day. That's the cornerstone of Christianity. Without the resurrection, we wouldn't be Christians. We wouldn't be followers of the way. And so with that resurrection, that is proven through history from even people that didn't like him. Yep. Jesus is God. He became one of us and he ascended back to the Father. If you believe that wholeheartedly, you're, you could be in the family of God. You just go talk to him. He'll reveal himself to you. And if he's not nudging on your heart, just bow, bow down now and pray to him. Go ahead, Kevin. Well, you know, you mentioned Romans 1, and I just quickly hear this. You know, he mentions the fact there's witnesses of God there in that chapter. One is the creation. He says, you know, if you can go out your door and look around at this vast, you know, world that we live in, and, and God's a creative hand. If you can look at this and say there is no God, you know, uh, he, he almost goes to the fact that you have a reprobate mind. If you can go out and say a God didn't create this, that, you know, all this was by chance. You know, and, and I know people say they believe that, but I, I really don't because, you know, those saying you don't ever meet an atheist in a foxhole. You know, everybody in time... Everybody you see in these old war movies, you know, they're, they're called, they call on God when, when they get in trouble. So we have the witness of creation. You go out and look at the stars at night. And I, I love the fact in Genesis chapter number one, when he talks about the creation of the stars, it's almost an afterthought, Brother Chris. He says, mm -hmm. and he made the stars also. Yeah. So trillions of stars. Well, they're, they're just, they're not, I mean, they're more than trillions or I probably I think everybody on Earth could have a trillion stars. I mean, they're they're just an innumerable uh, amount of stars in the universe. But it says, you know, He made the stars also. They're the work of His fingers, as Psalm eight says. You know that the, the heavens are the work of His fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, when we look at that creation is a witness that there's a God, but also our conscience bears witness that there's a God. That you know, when we do something wrong. We know we do. We know we do it wrong. And, you know, that's one of the whole purposes of the evolutionary uh, movement as well, that, you know, they want to throw off the bonds. As, as Psalm uh, 2 says, you know, break, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. They don't want to have cords and rules and regulations, so they try to, they try to do away with God so that would soothe their conscience. But we all know when we do something wrong. We have a conscience inside us that God gave it. And there's another witness that there's a creator. Uh, and so by these things, we should know that one day, and that's the thing, one day we're going to have to stand before our creator and give an account of ourselves. Absolutely. But and what if we don't lie that he gave us? You know, it says over there in Revelation 4, it says, he created all things, and he, it goes on to say, for thy pleasure, they are and were created. We were created to give God pleasure. Have you given God any pleasure today? Or have you been too wrapped up in this thinking world? And I can say that from, from experience. Sometimes I just get too wrapped up that I'm not doing anything, you know, for the, the kingdom of God. But we were made to give God pleasure. And, you know, the same men, you know, that God created them, gave them breath. They'll use that breath to blaspheme his name. And Chris mm -hmm. made mention of that Revelation 9 that 
when the judgments are coming, you know, that there are all these judgments pouring down on them. They're going to blaspheme God. Mm-hmm. The very one that could have saved them, they're going to blaspheme his name. What about you today? How are you, what are you going to do when you stand before your creator? And that, that is, that is the one appointment you'll keep. You may miss every appointment in your life. But there's one appointment. It says before he's appointed unto man wants to die. And I know there's people in the Bible that died more than once. So I, but it is saying, and as a matter of fact, there's a guy named, there was a man named Enoch. He didn't die at all. But as a, in a general rule, it says before he's appointed unto man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. So the judgment is after we die, we're going to stand before God, whether we stand at the judgment seat of Christ or we stand at the great white throne judgment. You know, if you're if you're saved, you'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ and you'll give account of your works, whether they be good or bad. But then you're covered by the blood of Jesus. You're just giving account of the works you've done, you know, and it makes mention of, of a building, you know, that the foundation's Christ and what you build on that will be be put through the fire and whatever's left, you know, that will abide. But, you know, some people, we're just going to, some people will just be sitting there with a foundation, you know, in a bunch of ashes there at the judgment seat of Christ. But that's for the saved. But for the lost, it talks about in Revelation 20, it says, I saw the dead, small and great. It talks about standing before the great white throne judgment. You'll stand before God. You'll stand before the God of the universe with the whole universe surrounding us. I mean, think of that. There's no escape. It talks about the earth and heavens are going to flee away in that day. There's no escape. And it, the book, it says the books will be open, and it'll be all that will matter if your name and it was not in that book. And it says you'll be cast into the lake of fire. to be there forever. My friend and I, this is a serious thing. We're living in serious time. You know, matter. You know, we may never. I may never see the rapture. I may go in and die tonight. I'm not, I'm not promised another day. And you're not either, listener. This could be your last day on this earth. What would you do if you had to stand before God right now? Amen. Amen. And I hope that that has touched the heart of someone out there or some people. This is what this ministry is all about. We don't want you to burn. And we want other Christians to step up to the plate in these last hours and preach the gospel. Reach your friends, reach your family, reach that person that you have a problem with, that you haven't forgiven, or they haven't forgiven you. Reach out. They need Jesus. And with that, this is our program. Now, thanks, Kevin, for joining me. Thank you, Chris, for having me. And um, remember, people out there, don't let them burn. I want you to think of a time when you had control over your mind. Now think of a time when you let anything into your subconscious. Have we been led to a critical junction by unseen forces? What does this mean for the future of mankind? What have you been trained to believe about UFOs and aliens? Have you been deceived? Are you waiting for something to show up? In this groundbreaking documentary film, the veil will be lifted, your eyes will be open, as the truth is exposed like never before. We are not alone, but they are not what you think. Disclosure is near, so what will be the event? The one event that will fool a global population in the last days? Find out soon as we uncover the alien deception. Entertainment Frontlines. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.